Hi everyone, welcome to one more video in the series of UPSC Flu Strategy. Today we will have discussion on one of the very important topic, how to analyze mock test. I will say this is the most important video among all the topics we have discussed so far. So please watch till very end. Okay, let's get started. See, one of the most important stage in your prelims preparation is mock tests. And like, why it's important to evaluate mock test if you try to understand this. The thing is, uh, mock test, they decide the course, the direction of our entire preparation. What happens if you are getting good marks in mock test? We tend to think that we are doing good. If you get less marks in mock test, we try to find out what exactly mistake we are doing and what ends up happening is we change our strategy to ensure that we get maximum marks. Okay. So for this reason mock test is very important. Like how, how do we analyze mock test? That is very important because that has a potential to change your strategy, the way you have been studying. Okay. So traditionally like uh, when you solve the mock test, you will come across different types of questions. Okay, there will be some questions which you will be able to solve. There will be some which you will not be able to solve. There will be some questions where you are totally confident. There will be some questions where you are not so confident. So, just for sake of uh, understanding, we we'll categorize all these questions into different types. So, these are the types. Okay. So, when you try to evaluate your answer sheet, that time there will be some correct answers, there will be some wrong answers. Okay. So, at the stage of evaluation, you will come across only these two types of categories, correct and wrong. However, when you will be writing the test, when you will be attempting these mock tests, there will be different categories, not just correct and wrong. Okay. There will be some questions where you are totally confident, like you are 100% confident that this is the answer and you will mark it like that. There will be some questions where your answer will be a logical guess. Okay, It's not something you are 100% sure, but uh, like probably that two, three statements and in that you are sure about one statement, two statements, but not all. So in that case, we will call it a logical guess. There will be some questions where it will be random guess. It's like you can call it like gut feeling. Okay. Where you'll be aware that uh, like you don't know exactly what is the answer, but most likely you think that this could be answer or that could be answer, and then you mark it like that. After that, there'll be some questions where you don't attempt at all. So, like that, this is the classification. You don't have to keep it in mind. This is just for the purpose of analysis. Okay. Now, so what happens? These are the questions we come across. Now, if you see in general, what we tend to analyze, after we give mock tests, there will be some correct answers, there will be some wrong answers. What ends up happening is we usually analyze the wrong ones. We also analyze the questions which we did not attempt, okay, which were left blank. So like, uh, let's imagine a situation that you are attempting a mock test. You give the mock test and after it's done, what we do? is we analyze all the questions which went wrong. We also analyze all the questions which we could not attempt. Okay. So let's say imagine there are 100 questions of which let's say you attempted 80. Out of 80, let's say again 60 were correct, 20 were wrong. And there are 20 questions which you did not attempt. So what will happen? You will analyze those 20 questions which went wrong and you will also analyze the 20 questions which you did not attempt. And you will try to understand what exactly is lacking in my preparation and accordingly you will change your strategy. Okay. But there is one very important thing that we usually forget. Okay. So what ideally we should be doing, like we have mentioned, we obviously have to analyze the wrong ones. We also have to analyze the questions which we did not attempt. Along with that, what we have to analyze is the questions for which we had guessed the answer in first place. Okay, if you go back one slide. Okay. 
like while attempting attempting the questions admit four categories confident logical guess random guess and not attempted so in that all three categories last three categories logical guess random guess and not attempted we have to analyze irrespective of the answer was correct or wrong and even in the confident category if our answer was incorrect we have to analyze okay. i hope it's not getting complicated okay i'll again sum up okay so ideally usually what we end up analyzing is the questions which went wrong and the questions which we did not attempt but ideally what we should be analyzing is questions which went wrong questions which we did not attempt and also the questions which we had guessed in the first place it can be a logical guess or it can be a random guess okay now why to do that that will be a natural question so what happens let's take one scenario let's say there is one question and you give some like uh, let's say you guess the answer and let's say luckily your answer came out to be correct this is all happening in mock test okay let's say there was a question where you guessed the answer and your answer came out to be correct and let's say you don't analyze that question so what will happen your doubt will not get addressed even when we go in final exam you still be guessing the answer because that time when you guessed because usually what happens when we don't look back at questions we forget what was my answer if it was correct or wrong so maybe after one week you will not remember you, that thing will still remain unclear in your mind and imagine same question is asked in exam again at that time you will be guessing and that time you will not remember like last time i had guessed and if it was correct or wrong usually that happens so the purpose is we should not be concerned about result when we are giving mock tests the purpose of mock test is to show illustrate the gaps in our knowledge okay and the gaps itself become known when you are guessing the answer in first place right when you are guessing it, it itself shows that there is gap in your knowledge there is something which you don't know that's why you are guessing so for that particular aspect there is need that you need to go in deep for that particular topic okay that is very much needed it's not question of correct or wrong at the level of mock test i'll again repeat at the level of mock test the goal should not be to get maximum marks the goal should be to find gaps in your knowledge and address those gaps okay so we saw what to analyze what not to analyze now we'll also see how to analyze okay this is also very important pay very close attention things are a little complex but these are very helpful in the long run so now as we discussed before we will be analyzing all the questions where we went wrong where we guessed the answer or where uh, we did not attempt in the first place so there will be two category of questions again inside this there will be some questions which are from your own sources okay where like for example for economy you are using some particular book for quality you may be using lakshmi kant now there can be some questions for which the answer is there in your own source okay that's category a there will be some questions for which the answer is not there in your source okay it's not mentioned in lakshmi kant at all if it's a quality question if it's economic question probably it's not mentioned in your book so th these two scenarios are possible if it's something from your source okay something which you are already read and still you are not able to answer then that becomes very important that you have to drill down okay what what exactly went wrong why i was not able to answer did i forget did i commit silly mistake did i not read properly so when you drill down you arrive at some conclusion some answer to why that particular question went wrong okay probably sometimes it will happen that your understanding itself was not so good in the first place of that particular topic but whatever it is you have to drill it down because unless you do that you will not find where exactly you need to improve okay so that is very important if the question was from your sources and it still went wrong 
then you have to analyze why it went wrong. You have to drill down the reason. Okay. The second case, if it's outside your sources, okay, if it's not mentioned in Lakshmi Kanda at all, or whatever book you are using for that particular subject, that time again you have to ask if the question is reasonable. Now believe me, there are some questions which are unreasonable. Okay, it's unfortunate, but that's the truth of the system. See, even in UPSC, somebody will say there are unreasonable questions, but I'll tell you in UPSC. They are not exactly unreasonable, they are random questions I will say and the proportion is not more than 10 to 15 percent. In the entire 100 question papers you will not get more random questions than 10 to 15. Okay, These are mostly from GK category, general knowledge, current affairs etc. But if you in your mock test you find that there is some question which is unreasonable, which doesn't fit the pattern of UPSC prelims, previous questions. In that case, you should be in a position that you discard that particular question. Okay. You don't take it to the heart. You don't take it seriously. Okay. And there will be some questions which you feel they are reasonable. You basically can ask questions like this. So in that case, try to find out why exactly you couldn't answer. Obviously, it was from outside your sources, so you could not answer. But then search for the topic, understand the topic and write it down. To your original sources so that next time when you read your original sources you, the books you are referring you will happen to go through that topic once again but unreasonable questions this is very important unreasonable questions you should not beat yourself up if you are not able to answer those questions unfortunately see the way UPSC makes question paper the institutions cannot match that question paper okay because not everybody in the institution is very experienced the way UPSC, you know, the, the professors or teachers who set the paper for UPSC, they are much more experienced, they are much more knowledge in public policy and all than what people in these institutions have. Okay, I am not against any institutions, but unfortunately this is reality. You don't get very good tests. Like, uh, there will be some good questions, it's not that all 100 questions will be unreasonable, but there, there will be some 20, 30 questions which are unreasonable and which will bring down your score. So if that is happening, then you should not worry too much. Okay, because when you are able to understand that this is an unreasonable question, such kind of questions will not be asked in final exam, then you don't have to beat down yourself. Okay, because that will add no value. Okay, and that will actually if you give if you take it too seriously that is even harmful because that way it will change the direction of your study you're getting what will happen you will take it too, too seriously you think that oh i'm not able to answer this kind of questions so probably i have to do that particular subject in more detail okay now the question itself in, itself is unreasonable in the first place now based on that if you change your strategy you will be going in the wrong direction that's what happens to most of the students every year. So don't become victim to this. Okay. So that's what I'll say. Mock tests are very important part of your preparation. Analyze them very systematically. If you do this whole exercise, it will take some three, four hours after solving the mock test. But it will be worth it. Okay. Because when you will drill down why a particular question went wrong, you will arrive at some conclusion which you can actually implement. And then that will give boost to your studies. Okay. So that way, if you keep solving mock test, all your errors will get addressed one by one, one by one, and eventually you'll be error free. Or to large extent, you'll not have like, so you'll not be committing so many mistakes. Okay. So that's that's all I have to say on this topic. I hope you'll have many questions. You can please put them in comment comment box. I'll be very happy to answer. Those who are being seeing a video for the first time, please uh, subscribe to our channel. We'll be putting more videos like this in coming time. And please like, share. Okay. Thank you.